hey, this is the Dowel Rod Critter Challenge. And what it is is we're 3D designing and 3D printing things that use dowel rods to connect them. So I call it a critter challenge. People try to make uh, animals or creations of some type, but it can be anything really. Here's my unicorn dog, who's world famous for only answering every question with a no. And there are little sticks that hold it together here. The reason I like this project is because it helps us understand that a 3D print can be a part of a larger project and you can start designing them to go with things that we have in the classroom. So we're going to get started with this project starting right now. And before we do, I want to point out that you can use more than just a dowel rod. Now this is a dowel rod. It's a stick. That's, it's a round stick. And below there is a skewer. Nothing to it. Just, it's, it's a smaller dowel rod. You could even use popsicle sticks or anything else, frankly. I, the purpose of this project is to get you thinking in terms of this could be uh, something that I use as um, a part of a 3D printing project. So now that we got that out of the way, I want to point out some ideas that I've had. Because not only do you need to know what material you're going to use, maybe you start with an idea. And so I've got Unicorn Dog. I've got weird fox looking thing. There's even panda eyes here. Okay, here is a weird um, spider looking thing that uh, a <laughs> little bit horrifying. We've got this bear guy who's saying, give me a hug. We'll be on a doll ride. And of course the, uh, the sailboat there. And so once you have kind of an idea what you need to have is a hole that is the same size as the thing you're making. So if this is a dowel rod, it's a quarter of an inch thick. Well, in Tinkercad, when I pull the cylinder in, it's the default is in millimeters. And you just need to know the size of the dowel rod in millimeters. 6.4 and 6.4. So now that I've changed the size by clicking on this white box right here. So when I click on this white box, it'll tell me the size, the diameter. I can change it right there and right there to 6.4. And that will match the size of the dowel rod in real life. So if I just make a really simple project, I would grab the drawing tool here. And it defaults to this really annoying pen tool which is not very helpful at all. I like to use the draw shape tool because I can make something solid really fast. Coming around, coming down behind me here, going over, up. Let's give this one really big thick legs. All right, done. So there is the butt of my thing. Now, is this thing going to be sitting down or is it going to be standing up? I, so far, it could be either way. I'm also going to have arms. So I'll, let's grab the work plane just for a minute. And we'll put another drawing tool on top. And we'll get a shape. This one, let's just do the most basic shape I can think of, which is arms straight out. Okay, you can even, I'll draw on little fingers at this point. All right, done. So I've got my bottom, here's my middle. I can always make the dowel rod longer for this example. Okay, now we need to come up with some sort of head. Of course you could use a sphere. There's all sorts of options here, but whatever you choose, we're going to put it up there, add details to it. So if I want to put an ear on this thing, let's put the work plane where we want the ear to go. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. Put it up there. Grab the shape that you're going to turn into an ear.
you know, get it close to the shape that you want. Now, right now, there's a gap there. I'm going to sink that down into the head a little ways. And here's a, here's a trick I've picked up. If I copy and paste it, what I can do is use this mirror tool. And so now it's an ear pointing this way. I'm going to mirror it so it's pointing that way. So if I go back to my mirror tool, click mirror. Now it's ready to be put on the other side. You can, of course, make it any way you want, but that's a little quick trick. So now I've got ears. We can give it holes for eyes, or we can give it eyes sticking out. I think I'm going to try holes this time. Okay, great. If I want to get a tiny little eyeball in the center, but now I'm holding down the shift key and it's scaling up proportionally. If I don't hold the shift key, it'll warp and distort, but if I hold the shift key, there it is, scaling up really nice for me. I can get it back where I want it. Great. So feel free to put more detail than this. Give it some toes, give it some attitude, give it a funny hat. Watch the flower making video on how to make cool flower shapes and make, make a hat for it. But when you are ready to 3D print this, when you're ready to try to make something out of it, there's gonna be a problem. We can't 3D print or we shouldn't 3D print something that is floating up in the air like this. So if I just highlight and group the whole thing, I'm going to have a problem. The printer is going to print this on the ground and it's going to print the next piece up floating and the, the, the last piece is going to be floating way up high in the air and you're going, to be, you're going to be wasting a lot of materials if it prints correctly at all. So to fix this, what we're going to do is get these pieces laying down side by side by side ready for a printer. But we already saw the first problem. If I just try to group the head let me just group the head. The, the, the hole has disappeared because it's now just making the one hole in the head. So let me ungroup that. I'm going to do something a little tricky. I'm going to grab that hole. I'm going to make some copies of it with the duplicate tool. So if I duplicate it, I clicked it two times so that there are three total duplicates. Okay, so there's three duplicates in there now. What I can do is click on one of the duplicates and hold down that shift key again and click on the head. Now I've only selected a hole and, and the head. So now when I group it, it's grouping those together just like before. There's still a hole down there. But you can see that there's still other holes remaining where we want them to be. So let's take this off to the side. We're going to put it down on the ground. Great. Let's do the same thing for these arms. I'm going to click on one of the holes and I'm going to shift click on this set of arms. While I group it, we will here we will have the next set. So now this is ready to be set on the ground, just like so. And so this last piece definitely needs a tail before we do any more. Let's give this guy the world's fastest tail. There's my cat tail. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight those pieces and hit the group button one last time. Last bit of advice before you want to 3D print it. Lay them down flat. Bring it over. Lay it down flat. And don't have any pieces hovering off the ground like this. So we can bring it and 
flat. Well, if you're in my classroom, you already know that you're going to highlight it and click export to send this to the printer. You grab that STL file and you, you turn it in the same way we turn everything else in the class. So I hope this challenge was interesting, fun, cool, and I can't wait to see what you make. Awesome.